Hey YouTubers, um, got a video for you today. Hopefully it's a quick video because I always go into these thinking it's going to be maybe a 10-15 minute video and then I'm sitting there trying to cut down and edit over a half hour of footage trying to make it be as short as possible but still make sense. So anyway, the process today, yesterday I turned on, well I was driving my car, it has the automatic headlights on. Um, it got dark, the headlights came on and a message on the dash came on said um, low beam failure or something like that i'm gonna show you guys what it says but anyway as usual if you like my videos click like if you want to see more of the same hit subscribe let's get into it turn the lights on right dip beam right dip headlight main beam headlight okay so that's the message that you're getting on the dash and let me come around here and I'll show you guys what's going on on the outside. This headlight is on. You can see that. And this headlight is not. I don't know what the process is on this, but the bulb is all the way in the back here. But then there's this ballast on here that uh, I guess changes the voltage that goes to the bulb. So it could either be the ballast or it could be the bulb. I don't know which one it is, but the first step in the process is to swap the bulbs around left to right, um, simply because these bulbs are really expensive. The ballast is also really expensive, but I would hate to change the bulb and it's the ballast or vice versa. So the first step in the process is that I'm going to take the good bulb, which is on this side, and I'm gonna put it on this side and then start the car up and turn the headlights on and see if my problem moves to the other side. If that's the case, then I know for a fact it's the bulb because the only thing that I'm switching side to side is the bulb. If it doesn't move to the other side, well then I know I got a whole different problem. It could be the ballast, it could be a fuse, it could be a whole range of other problems. So let me figure out how to get this headlight off and then I'm gonna show you guys the process. Okay, so Removal of the light bulbs. So on the driver's side, on the driver's side, you have two options. You can either remove this uh, power steering reservoir, which there's just two T30 Torx right here holding it. And then once you undo those, you can just kind of pull it up and out of the way. And then you'll have room in the back for to get the headlight out. Or you can do what I did, which was I removed this entire top cover here which it was just held on with snap clips. And then there's a T30 Torx that goes right here on the inside of the headlight to the front. Here, I'll push the headlight back in place, you'll see. Okay, so the T30 Torx goes right here. That's why you have to remove the covers because it's hiding under the cover. There's another T30 Torx that goes right here. And then there's another one that goes down here. And the back of the headlight now these are two totally different screws so this one fine thread screw this one goes on the side here and then in the back down on the bottom there are two of those and then there's another one that's this coarse thread it looks like a wood screw and this is the one that goes in the front here it goes into this plastic now once you remove those three you can pull the headlight forward it won't come all the way out but you can pull it forward probably about, I say three, four inches. That's all you need. So once you've done that, you see back here, I've already removed this door and how that door removes is this metal piece pulls out of the way and then it's just this flap. So when it's in there, it's like this and that metal retaining clip pops off of here and then it opens up like this and then out once you remove that all right push this headlight back in and once you remove that you see the silver piece this is your headlight assembly there are no screws or clips holding it in place there's like this spider web thing if you look on the side you see those metal tabs and on the other side they're the same metal tabs and all you have to do is pull, you see that connector on the bottom? You pull that connector down. 
There's no clips, nothing on the side to squeeze or anything like that. You just pull it away. And then once you pull that down and it's disconnected, then you can pull the bulb out. So I'm gonna try to get an angle where I can kind of show you guys what's going on while doing it, because there's not a lot of room down here. I have fat fingers doing this. So the connector pulls out like that. And then the bulb just wiggle it side to side Okay, so I wasn't able to remove this and hold the camera at the same time, but the bulb goes in the socket like this. The connector always faces down. Um, the reason I say it's always facing down is because the way this pops in and out, you could put it in any direction and force it and it might go in, but you never want it to go in any direction other than having the connector facing down. Over here, was a little bit different process. I had to remove this air cleaner box. Um, I didn't remove the headlight like I did on the other side. What I did was I disconnected this from the intake, uh, from the air duct here. And then on this side here, I just undid these two clips, metal clips, one on the top, one on the bottom. And then undid this breather hose down here on the bottom and lifted the air cleaner up and out of the way. And then the process is the same for this bulb. And so you just pop this, see this um, metal bracket that's holding the bulb. And so you pop him out of place like so. And of course the whole thing falls down. I don't wanna lose that because if moisture gets into that bulb uh, socket, you're gonna have problems. Now, same thing over here. And let me see if Maybe I can get an angle where I can show you guys what's going on while I'm doing it. Alright, so here's a connector that just pulls out like so and then the bulb just wiggles out like so. And then there are the spiderweb legs. And of course, remember when you're putting it back in, bulb goes in with the connector facing down. Um, Xenon HID bulbs. So I'm guessing these are a little bit pricey. We're going to go inside and I'm going to show you the difference between these two, the good one and the bad one, so you can see. It's pretty obvious what's going on. I don't have to do any more investigating. All right, so here we are. And we have the good bulb and we have the bad bulb. I'm not sure what happens inside of there, but if you see this brown stuff inside of here, inside of this bulb, that is a guarantee that this bulb is bad. That's sign number one. Also, you see how the top of it, this area right here is kind of murky, kind of milky, and this one here is perfectly clear. The whole bulb from top to bottom is perfectly clear. And also, this piece right here, this is just an insulated wire, and this uh, green piece. This is just insulation to keep it um, insulated from the elements and to keep heat off of it because this bulb gets really really hot. This one the insulation is there. It has a slight crack in it. Um, it's probably not going to last much longer. We'll see. But you can, if you look at it carefully, you'll see that one of these bulbs is not like the other. This one, the connectors are solid metal. This one, these connectors um, they have holes. If you're getting bulbs for your 2010 Audi Q5, the low beam, then this is the part number that you want right here. Okay. Um, this one is made in Germany. This one's made in Korea. I'm guessing the one in Germany is probably the OEM. Um, and it's still in good shape. This one is the aftermarket one. I'm guessing this bulb probably went out. Somebody replaced it with a cheap one and it went out again. I don't know. I have no idea how that goes. All I know is that this one is definitely bad and this one is definitely good. So I'm going to go to the parts store. Depending on how expensive they are, I'm probably going to just buy a pair of them and change both of them at once. Um, but if it's astronomically expensive, then I'm just going to buy one and replace the bad one. So just because um, I have my car partially taken apart 
and it happens to be a really really nice day out today i'm not even gonna put the car together to go to the parts store it's only a mile down the road i'm gonna jump on my e-bike and then when i get back with the new bulb i'm gonna put it in and show you guys just got back from the parts store and i got the bulb i got just one bulb holy moly 130 bucks before tax 141 after tax needless to say i only bought one bulb um let's see what they gave me for 140 dollars the thing you have to remember with these bulbs as with any automotive bulbs is that it is imperative that you do not under any circumstances touch the bulb the glass part of the bulb or you know preferably any part of the bulb with your bare finger if you have to touch the bulb part i would recommend you get some nice cotton gloves if not latex gloves will do so as you can see that center bulb i mean that yeah that center part of the bulb right here is nice and clear the entire bulb is nice and clear the insulation on the wire going from the top to the bottom of the bulb is in perfect tact um, this is the original well this is the one that's already in there so if you look at this one and then you look at the one that's good that's in the car they are identical these are the exact same bulbs same part number same manufacturer same everything this is the odd man out peak yeah i don't i don't know where you would get peak brand um not i don't know too much about it but i know that this is what was in the car and then i just went to the parts store and i got this which is the exact same thing so i'm gonna put these two bulbs back in the car and then once I get them installed, then before I install the connector that goes in there, I'm going to just put a dab of dielectric grease on the connector and then plug it in. The reason why I'm not going to put dielectric grease on this is simply because I don't want to risk under any circumstances getting a dab of grease anywhere on here or on here. As usual, with these short videos, they end up being long videos. Um, so right here where you see these two holes, this is where my power steering reservoir is supposed to go. This is my power steering reservoir and this is the bracket. Um, I had to remove that because I couldn't figure out how to get this light assembly out all the way. And when I was trying to install the bulb, it wouldn't go in. It would go like two thirds of the way in, but it wouldn't see, which I didn't think much about it, but when I was taking the old bulb out, it was exceptionally hard to pull out on the driver's side, whereas the passenger side was actually a breeze. Now, if you look down in here, you'll notice that these two down here are bent in. Also, these up here are bent in and these on this side here are bent in I'm guessing that somebody at some time oh and also this one over here is kind of bent but I'm guessing somebody at one time tried to put this in was in a rush or wasn't paying attention or whatever the situation was um, they bent all those tabs and that's what was stopping the bulb from going in and seating the other side popped right into place no problem this side was giving me a hell of a time and then once I looked down in there I could see those pieces were bent. So if you go to put your bulb in and it's not seating easily, like it should just snug in there and just thump and, and slide into place, um, you want to investigate and make sure these metal tabs aren't bent like mine are. I'm going to have to take a small uh, pair of pliers or screwdriver or something and bend those back out of the way so that they're not stopping the bulb from going in. And then once I do that, it should go in. I was able to bend those tabs back to where they're not intruding into the entryway. Um, they're not all the way out of the way, but they're enough that I could get the bulb in. And so now, when you put the bulb in, and remember, connection facing down.
and it snugs into place. You hear that click? It went all the way in. It's all the way seated, and you can tell because those spider legs are all the way grabbing on it. Um, you know, if they're stopping short to where they're not all the way on the side of it, all the way around, then it's not properly seated. And it really shouldn't have been that hard. Um, if you put these bulbs in and you line them up perfectly straight and then slide them in, they just slide right into place with very little effort. If you gotta wiggle and press and do a bunch of stuff, then there's something wrong. Either you're putting it wrong, in wrong, or somebody put the previous one in wrong and bent the tabs the way I did. So just beware of that when you're putting it in. All right, I put the bulbs in. I still gotta, I gotta screw that bulb over here back in. And then I gotta put all the intake stuff back over here. And I also gotta mount back the uh, power steering reservoir. But I was just checking my work, making sure everything is working right before I put Humpty Dumpty back together again. So there you have it, bulb replacement. I only need to change one side, but I showed you how to change both sides in case the side I'm changing is not the side you're changing. So that's the process, guys.